Hello everyone again. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel of uh, Geography Lecture Series. Uh, today we will again we will discuss on another topic of the geography. Uh, but I want to uh, let you know that I make a plan. I even made a plan to uh, you know come out with with videos of different topics of uh, geography. So in this context. Uh, uh, first, I will uh, I will be covering the topics which are being popular in geography, which are being more important, uh, are being uh, uh, what is it being taught in the geography. <clears throat> I mostly I'll take from the uh, from the uh, from the subjects from various subjects such as like oceanography, like uh, <clears throat> climatology, hydrogeography, and the biogeography, and also urban geography, remote sensing and GIS. So with the time, you know, as this time will proceed, I will, I will, I will creep towards the, uh, towards the other topics also. So let's, uh, without uh, wasting our time, let's proceed to the, to the, to the, to the new lectures, you know, which is about the uh, hydrological cycle or the water cycle. As you know, this topic is very important because, you know, this topic is being, uh, I'll say, being taught in or being part of, you know, oceanography, uh, climatology, to some extent climatology and hydrogeography. What I say to some extent to the climatology because the steps which are, we are going to discuss uh, in, the, <clears throat> in this lecture of hydro, hydrological cycle or the cycle which are the main uh, steps uh, these are steps are being taught in the climatology, like such as like evaporation, condensation, and the precipitation and the runoff. So these are the part of the climatology. So let's go to uh, to the lecture, which is all about the uh, hydrological cycle. So hydrological cycle or the water cycle is very important. Uh, for the geographer, also been, I'll say it, it is a very common topic, uh, which I, I, I must say everyone, everyone should have a knowledge about this one, because uh, through this hydrological cycle, uh, the the water, water which is being uh, moving or rolling, the mostly the water is being received or being got by the different parts of the landmass area. So, hydrological cycle or the water cycle is the main source, I'll say main source of fresh water, or you can say source of water um, in the world. Now the different, uh, the distribution and uh, the, you know, distribution of supplies, another thing or another thing, but hydrology cycle mostly provide the water to the world or to the landmass area. So let's start with the definition or its introduction. So the hydrological cycle is a conceptual model that describes the storage uh, movement of the water between biosphere, atmosphere, lithosphere, and the hydrosphere. So as uh, in our previous, uh, previous lecture, we discussed these, all, uh, these spheres. Uh, we also discussed biosphere, atmosphere, so lithosphere, and hydrosphere, and geographic domains. So the water side, the water which is being rolling, are we moving, uh, moving between these spheres, such as biosphere, atmosphere, lithosphere, and hydrosphere. It referred to the transfer of water from one state or reservoir to another. So when the water is moving, are being rolling into these uh, between these uh, these spheres, it it changes states, it changes uh, its its place or the region. So it's all about the moving of water with its change in its state, in the form, and also changing the place where it's been found there. So hydrological cycle is a conceptual model. Let's go further. Uh, let me clear as you'll find a very, uh, very important and very interesting facts in the coming slows. The, the hydrologic cycle is the exchange of energy with influence climate. Uh, this is also very important statement. What it says, not only hydrologic cycle where the water is being moved from bottom to the top and top to the bottom, but it's also been exchange of the energy which influence our climate. So let's see how it is being, uh, it is the energy which is being exchanged 
and how it influences the climate. So when water contains, it releases energy and warms the environment. So when you see the steps of uh, hydrological cycle, uh, we have evaporation and water evaporates. I'll, I'll go uh, individually, these all the steps in coming slides. So when water is in evaporate and be, when it reaches the second stage of the condensation, when it be condensed, after condensation, when it when it it, it precipitate, so so when it be condensed, what is way it release the energy which warm the environment. So when the water vapors goes up and when they close up together, when they close together in the form of droplets, they when they start to burst, they release the energy and that energy become the part of environments. When water evaporates, when water evaporates, it takes the energy from surrounding environment, dropping the temperature. So when the water has been at the, at the, at the, at the surface, at the bottom, when it convert into the vapor and that vapor is start to move upward, they, what is it, they, what is it, it takes energy from surrounding area. So they take the energy from surrounding area and when they go upward, they drop the temperature of that area or the surrounding area. So uh, not only the water has been moved, it also the energy being exchanged. Either the energy is being released, so they either it, it make the environment warm or it's also dropping, the, uh, decrease the temperature and also make it more cooler. So the global hydrological cycle is derived by solar energy. You all know this hydrological cycle is being run by are the drive by, are the control are determined by the solar energy. So when the sunlight is being falling on the surface of Earth, uh, so the water which is available there, with the water has been present, they start to evaporate. So uh, I will go further in the coming slides. I, I will have a detailed uh, discussion on that. But what has been said that sunlight is the driving force. It's a driving force behind the running of the hydrological cycle. So what is it? It is a closed system in continual circulation. So this hydrology cycle is a closed system, is being, uh, is being fixed, are being uh, running with the same, uh, same intensity, I'll say same system, and it's a continual uh, circulation. It's, it's in a continual process. So this is closed, and it's continuous, and it's continuous. It's a closed system, you can see it a conceptual, conceptual diagram, a conceptual, conceptual system. It's a continual process, a continual circulation. It's been continuous, been happening. So there is a definite amount of water in the system and this amount doesn't change. So what has been said, the amount of water, the water which is present here, it is a definite, it's a fixed one. So there's a no change in the amount of water but because water is moving, so we feel we might be feel that the water is being uh, decreased or increased. But in hydrogen cycle, water doesn't increase or decrease. The amount is fixed because it's been rolling, is is moving, is circulating. So this amount doesn't change. So what is saying? It doesn't change. About ninety nine percent of water is stored within the within this cycle, leaving only one percent which is in the circulation. So. 99% of water is again stored, only 1% of water has been circulating. Jojo 99% is been same, is been fixed. 8% percent will circulate kartai, either been there or there. So most of water is stored within the world oceans. Everybody knows about that. We already discussed that 97% water has been found in the ocean and the seas. And with another two percent stored in the ice caves in the glacier. So, if you if you watch my previous lectures, uh, I had discussed about the amount of water distribution of water, fresh water, break, brackish or saltish water. How much water is present? So, we had a very strange uh, calculation or statistic. Study was that ninety seven percent water was present in the oceans. That is the brackish saltish water. The rest of water is the fresh water. Oh, and out of, uh, if, if, you, if you make it hundreds, uh, 97 in the ocean, 2% is in the ice cave in glacier. So you can imagine the ice, ice caves or glacier, they always been uh, in a solid form. They are freeze ones, so until unless we have a certain conditions where they start to melt. Otherwise they, are, they will be there in that form. They will not be melting. So uh, 
go further. So water moves from one reservoir to another by the way of process like evaporation, condensation, precipitation, uh, uh, precip deposition, runoff, infiltration, sublimation, transpiration, melting, and groundwater flow. So these are the different steps by which water has been rolling. One is the evaporation, then we have a condensation, precipitation, deposition, runoff, infiltration, sublimation. Sublimation is a process by which uh, water, because I will discuss these uh, uh, these evaporation conditions separately. Sublimation is a process. Infiltration means when water goes down or percolate, uh, percolate inside the earth. And sublimation is when water, uh, when, this, uh, when the ice directly convert into the vapor. So especially when the ice, the ice which is found at the top of the mountains on the glacier ice cap area, they directly convert into the vapor and goes in the environment. Transpiration, melting, and groundwater. The ocean supply most of the evaporated water found in the atmosphere. Yeah, this is true. The most of the water comes, which has been evaporated, comes from the uh, from the ocean, which goes to the atmosphere. So of this evaporated water, only 91 percent of it is returned to the ocean basin by the way of the precipitation. So what is being said, that if 100% evaporation is happening on the, surf, on the oceans, 91% of that water, which 100% which goes in the form of evaporation in the, in the atmosphere, 91% return back directly to the oceans or the seas. So 91% 91% comes back. So what happens about 9%? The remaining 9% are transported to areas over landmass where climatological, climatological factors induce the formation, formation of precipitation. So the precipitation which has been happening in the landmass area, 9% of water goes there. Again, the resulting imbalance between rates of evaporation and precipitation over land and ocean is correlated by, corrected by the runoff and groundwater flow to the oceans. So the same, the 90% of water which went to the landmass areas, again, what happens when water uh, precipitation happens, when rainfall happens, water comes down at the surface of earth, it starts to run off. Some, some water is being absorbed or percolate, which goes inside the earth or infiltrate. Oh, some percent, percent of water, some amount of water start to uh, move or run off. So slowly and gradually, gradually under the influence of gravity or slope, it reached to the oceans and the seas. So again, uh, uh, this uh, water is being added to the ocean by, by, the, by the runoff. So this is again, uh, this is the conceptual framework I will, uh, I'm showing in, the, in these slides. So water is continuously cycled in, in various reservoirs. This cycle occurs uh, through the process of evaporation, condensation, precipitation, deposition, runoff, infiltration, sublimation, transportation, melting, transpiration, melting, and the groundwater. On average, so this is statement very important. On average, water is renewed rivers once every 16 days. So our rivers, by average, every 16 days, they get the water uh, uh, from, uh, through, through this uh, hydrological cycle or the water cycle. So some of these resources, especially groundwater, are being used by humans at rate that far exceed their renewable times. This type of resources use making this type of water effectively renewable. So what this says, look at. Uh, uh, we have a two types of energy. One is the renewable energy, another is the non-renewable energy. Renewable energy is that which regenerates, which rebirth, which reoccurs. So, in in this context, we have a land, which is every every time we have available land area, land we have, a, or you can say soil, and other uh, soil is also being part of the land. We have a air, we have a water. So these are being considered the renewable energies. Okay. And we have a non-renewable energy. Non-renewable energies means they, they are in limiting amount. They are limit. They are being restricted. Uh, once we are being using them, there are less chances of reoccurrence or reproduction. So they are, they, uh, once we consume them, we use them, they are not going to be regenerated. So it takes lots of time 
of region so fossils fuels one of them the minerals which are we we are being using of them so these are all. so here what is being saying that somewhere the water becomes a non renewable non renewable because the way we are being using the water because you, you know the population our population is being increasing or exceeding so when we compare the population and the supply of water all will be water it's always been so in this case when we are being using that water in a you know what we required and what has been supplement uh, uh, supply supplement or supplying of water that one so it's been exceeding so in this case the uh, water becomes the non renewable part so we need to have a, a more careful more conscious in the consumption and the use of the water so this is the conceptual uh, framework of the hydrological cycle so look at this is the ground water or the ocean water so from ocean water the water start to evaporate it goes into the air then it condenses uh, condense there form the clouds the clouds start to burst then precipitation rainfall happens so water comes down at the surface so look at when the water is coming down we start to run off and on uh, on the slopes because you know oceans are always at downwards and the land mass areas at the upwards so they have always the water table of oceans so because the height is being uh, you know determined with the ocean table so land mass are always be there so they have a height there so under the uh, influence of uh, slope or the gravity the water start to run off again become part of the ocean so some uh, some portion of water is being percolate it goes inside which is called the process of percolation or infiltration become the water uh, part of the ground water of subsurface water some again the water is being uh, which is been in the what is say in the plants or soil it again goes upward it is in the form of transpiration so this process when the water comes uh, comes up are uh, coming out from the plants we call this process process evapotranspiration so i hope you understand this concept of process so this is the same thing uh, you might see transportation precipitation deposition so we'll go one by one this this the same thing uh, in hydrological cycle as you know uh, we, we we said that the oceanic waters are important most of the evaporation happens at the oceans water so oceans are the main source of uh, evaporation or you can say hydrological cycle so even the land mass area they get the fresh water from the oceans so once the water has been evaporated and then condensed and the precipitate so here uh, we just have to see the you know standing uh, the location of these uh the what is it these oceans so these are the world oceans how much we have so we have indian ocean we have a south atlantic ocean we have southern ocean south pacific ocean north pacific ocean we have a arctic ocean we'll see how much water and percentage or uh, area they have been covering so surface area of our planet covered by the oceans and the continent so look at uh, earth surface or uh, the land mass area or land covered 29% the rest of the covered by the waters water of the oceans so this all is water so, so pacific ocean which is the biggest of all uh, it contains or it covered i'll say 30% almost 30% more than 30% of uh, you know water or the land area then we have atlantic ocean which is a 20 20% of uh, water water area indian ocean which is for, which covering 14% and the southern ocean which cuts in 4% and the arctic ocean which contain 2.8% so pacific number one then we have atlantic ocean so here is the first step of water cycle uh water cycle start from the evaporation evaporation is the first step in the water cycle so evaporation is a process by which water change from liquid to the gas gaseous or in the vapor form so uh you know the water is present at the surface of earth in the form of droplet in the form of liquid either in the oceans or in the river seas ponds even the even the soil water so that water start to evaporate it change state from uh, from liquid to the gas or the vapor and they start to move further up in the in the environment or in the atmosphere so evaporation is the primary pathway that water moves from the liquid state back into the water cycle is atmospheric water 
Studies have shown that the ocean, seas, lakes, rivers provide nearly 90% of moisture in the atmosphere via evaporation, with the remaining 10% being contributed by the plant transpiration. So, uh, about 90% of water transport, uh, water has been evaporated from the from the ocean uh, and uh, uh, from the ocean, seas, lakes, and the rest of 10% comes from the plants, which process all the transpiration. So the, uh, you know, the plants, uh, the what you say, the leaves of the plants are porous one, which have a, which have a, which have a, openings. From these openings, the water is being coming out, the farm, which is which process all the transpiration when the sunlight is being, on. and you know, their the roots are always being downward, down beneath the earth. Uh, some some plants are deep rooted, some are moderate rooted. So roots are always being at the bottom. So through this, the water is being you know uh, goes upward in the in the sky in the form of transpiration. A very small amount, a very small amount of water vapor enter the atmosphere through the sublimation. As I told you, sublimation is a process by which water convert directly from uh, uh, from solid to the vapor form. So most of the, you know, top of the peaks of top or peaks of the mountains where there is a ice, ice has been there. So those, that ice, uh, you know, uh, that ice convert into the vapors and directly goes in the environment or the atmosphere. So the process by which water changes from a solid ice you know, outer case bypassing the liquid phase. So the third, the second phase, when we have a ice, they convert on the liquid and liquid convert on the gases. So it, in the, the sublimation process leaves, uh, leaves the second process of uh, solidification, means where the solid is happening, means liquid form. So liquid form is being gone. So, uh, so in this case, it directly converting from solid to the gas. So there's no liquid phases here. So most of water that evaporate from the ocean falls back into the oceans is a precipitation, fine. Only 10% of water evaporate from the oceans is transported over the land falls in precipitation. I told you 90% fall in the, in the oceans and 10% goes to the land mass area. So once evaporated, water molecules spends about 10 days in the air. So when the water evaporates, they can remain in the environment for the 10 days. So this is the, so again, that was the first process when the water goes up in the form of vapor and, and is always being available in the environment or in the, in the atmosphere. So what happened? The next step is the condensation, is the end of the process. So condensation is the process by which water vapor in the air is changed into the liquid. So that water, which was in the vapor form, again is being changing in the liquid form. So once it's been changing from vapor to liquid, we call this the condensation process. So condensation process is based on the clouds, where the clouds are being formed. So that water evaporates under certain conditions. They coal uh, it together, are close together. We will see this process. So uh, water vapor in the air gets cold or changed back into the liquid, forming the clouds. Condensation happens one other two ways, either in the air is cooled to do in its dew point or become so saturated. So the condensation happened uh, because of two ways. Uh, it is a two factor or the two ways. One is the dew point and is a saturation, saturation point. Either the, you know, the, uh, the air is being uh, reached to the dew point. Dew point is a condition of the temperature, it means there is a, there's a low temperature, or uh, you can say cold temperature, where uh, that uh, the vapor start to convert into the liquid. Another state is saturation. Saturation, the condition of the air, where water, sorry, where that air could not hold more water. So what happens when these, uh, when uh, when the vapors goes up, when and they start to uh, combine together, start to close together, and they make uh, the droplets. So in, in, in the clouds, so those clouds doesn't have a more capacity because that air has already been saturated. So once, once that uh, uh, the other uh, droplets will be, uh, will be part of the tendons, part of those clouds, the clouds start to burst. So what is that? Means cloud, clouds don't have a capacity to hold more, more water. So this called this saturation. So the condensation happened because happens of the two ways, because of two ways. One is the dew point, dew points related to the temperature and the saturation, saturation related to the saturation means the 
a, the holding capacity of the air. So one is the temperature, another, another is the air. It's similar like, you know, uh, if uh, the, the example is given here, that when you, when you have a cold glass of water, when you pour the, uh, 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 what is it, the cold water in the glass, and you put that water, that glass, uh, in an area which is warmer one, so what will happen, the outside corner of the glass, they will have a droplet. So what happens, the, the, outer, the outer environment, because you know, in the, uh, in the environment, on the air, it is always vapor. So when the vapor, they will find the low temperature, because low temperature is it at the corners, at the corner, at the sides of the glass. So that by the catch, they convert those vapor into the droplets. So similar happens here in the condensation process. Uh, number third is the precipitation. So we had an evaporation, uh, condensation, now the precipitation. What is precipitation? Precipitation occurs when so much water has condensed. When the water is being condensed, there are lots of cloud. They, they, the, uh, they have made or uh, formed the clouds and those clouds, are, those clouds are almost saturated and reach on the dew points and the air cannot hold any more. So in this case, what happens, the clouds get heavy and waterfalls back into the earth in the form of rain, hail, sleet or the snow. So when these clouds start to burst, they give water. That process is called the precipitation. Precipitation means the, uh, in other words, they are being called the rainfall. But that precipitation comes in different forms. One is the rain, another is the hail. Hail, uh, you can see the, what is it, something like the uh, bigger, uh, these are being there in the form of that. And then we have a sleet. Sleet is the, what I say, sleet when the, when the rainwater is mixed with the snow. So we have a, a mixture of both uh, snow and the drops. So we call it the sleet. Sometimes you, you, you experiencing the, uh, uh, the rainfall, at the same time we have a snowfall. That sleeting is slight, it's not like a, you know, like a hail or the snow. It is similar like a very puffy type of snow falling and with the rain water. And number 10 is a snow, when directly snow is coming from. So when the droplets are coming from the top, from the atmosphere, uh, and they find the low temperature, they are coming from the top and they find the low temperature on the way, they convert from liquid to the, liquid to the solid form and they convert in the snow and they fall on the, on the grounds. So thank you very much. It was all about the, uh, uh, hydrological cycle or the water cycle, which was important for us to you know discuss here. I hope you understood that. Uh, so we will come out with uh, uh, with another video in the future. Uh, so till then, uh, till then, thank you very much and take care of yourself. I hope you understand this all things. Thank you.